Hello everyone, I am so, so excited for challenge two in our Success Habits five day challenge. I hope you're really excited for this. I hope you've been looking forward to this and I really hope you've had time to watch yesterday's live. So whether you watch the replay, whether you join me live, whichever one it was, I am genuinely so excited to be here with you for day two. The engagement in the group has been insane. I'm loving all the comments, that your notes are just phenomenal. And if you're watching this on the replay, I wanna see a very big welcome to all of you. I'm gonna read out some of the names that I can see popping up here. Erica, Libby, Krista, Erica, Jyoti, Vinod, Golden, Chrissy, Nada, how are we, Ramni? If you want a shout out, let me know where in the world you're tuning in from. And also say a hello. And also let me know if you're excited. Let me know what you learned from session number one. I want to know what was your biggest takeaway from number one? What is that one challenge? What is that small step, that big priority that you're going to try out from challenge one, day one? Let me know. I want to read them out. Senthi from South Africa, thanks so much for being here. Claudia from California, wonderful to see you. Ryan, hey guys, on my way to school and excited to hear day two. Ryan, you're in the right place. Thanks for joining this school. Isabel, wonderful to see you. I'd love to have your ideas of what this is. <clears throat> I feel that there are two types of education, right? I feel that there are two types of education. How many of you can not hear me? Can everyone hear me? Everyone hear me okay? I think it's okay. Awesome. This is great, this is great, Emily. Let me know if you can't hear me. I think everyone can hear me. I just saw one person say no sound. I'm just checking with all of you. I hope you can hear me. So, excited to hear me from Malaysia, says Isabella. Stephanie from Michigan, good to see you here as well. This is great, awesome. So, <clears throat> there are two types of education, right? There are two types of education. But before I tell you that, let me know what your biggest takeaway was from day one, as I see the views climbing, as I see you coming in online, as I see people joining the live, I just wanna find out. So Gayatri says, from day one, it would be to prepare your to-do list a day before and not on the same day. Huge win, guys, huge win. I know my schedule for a week in advance, right? I know my schedule for a week in advance, which means on the day, I can actually live in the moment. If you're making your to-do list day to day, and just pile up and you'll never ever win. How many of you, press the like or love button if this is you, how many of you actually managed to not check your phone last night before going to bed? How many of you managed to do that? <clears throat> Mark, Jay, let's get it. Excited to be catching the live version this time around. Mark, welcome man, good to see you. Hello from Worth, Texas, says Susan. Love the one hour phone at bedtime. Susan, I hope you tried that out. Awesome, Kavit, great to see you here. Curlin, the biggest thing I took away that I'm most definitely doing is adding a reminder to do something the next day that will make me happy and excited. I woke up super motivated. Kalin, if you try that every day, I promise you it will work. You have to set the mood you want to wake up in the night before, right? It's huge, it's so underestimated. You have to set the mood you wanna wake up in the night before. It's just like when you wanna wake up the next day, you set an alarm. This is a really powerful point. When you want to wake up the day after, when you want to wake up tomorrow, you set an alarm today. That's when you physically wanna wake up. If you wanna wake up emotionally positive tomorrow, if you want to wake up focused tomorrow, if you want to wake up energized tomorrow, you have to set that intention today. Just like we set an alarm for tomorrow today, physically, mentally, we have to set an alarm today for tomorrow. Does that make sense? Does that resonate? I think that's super powerful, right? That's super powerful as a point. You don't set the alarm the day you wanna wake up. You don't set the intention the day you wanna wake up. You set it the night before. Hence, the most important thing to successful people, success habits in the world, is your evening routine, right? This is great, Bridget. Hi Jay, stop using the mobile an hour before bed last night, loving this challenge. Awesome, Bridget, thank you so much. Susmit said, I woke up 15 minutes earlier and work out, feel greater after gaining momentum. 
Geraldine, hi Jay, yesterday was amazing. Major factor was to unwind properly at night to recharge the more productive love from Ireland. If you've just been joining guys, I'm reading out what your biggest takeaways were from yesterday. This is a community, I love interaction. I love to see what you're taking away. Barbara, you had a great comment here. The letting go part was the most shocking to me. Not many times I reflect back on the day. I'm usually so quick to want to fall asleep, but it felt great to reflect, amazing. Salesh, great to see you. Ashok, blessings to you and your family. Thank you, Ashok. I really appreciate that. Bettina, good to see a genius here. I wrote down my intentions and affirmations last night and actually stuck to it. Did get up at 6.30 a.m. on a Saturday morning, ready, exercised, meditated, and took the dog down. Pretty good for a weekend morning. Bettina, that's incredible for any weekday morning. Well done. Tracy says, I put my phone one hour away before I slept, never touched it till two hours after I woke. Amazing, guys, you're seeing huge change in one day. Now don't worry, don't get sad, don't get caught up or disappointed if it doesn't carry through. It's, it's okay, it's a challenge, it's a test, you, you'll get there, but it's incredible that you're already seeing change because you're part of a community right now. And believe it or not, I, I really want you to understand this point. You are being energized by everyone who's engaging in this community. If you're trying to make a change right now in these five days, you're being energized by the fact that there are over 100,000 people, now something like 140, 145,000 people that together are trying to make a change. The only other place that that number of people are together right now is Coachella, right? But we're hashtag Nochella and we're focusing on our growth, we're focusing on our personal development. Andrea, I'm glad you're enjoying these sessions. Anisha, hi Jay, loving the three hours wait time before work, win-win. Small change, big priority, says Magdalena. That was a big game changer. Annika said the biggest step to overcome is putting away your phone. Wow, phone's the thing. Shannon says preparing your to-do list the night before, no cell phone before an hour before bed. Amazing that you guys have taken away one very clear message that I love. Angela, hello Jay from Manchester. Phone was off from 8 p.m. until 8 a.m. I love that. Your phone needs to go to bed too, right? You, to recharge your phone, <clears throat> you need a battery for your phone. You need to recharge. If you're always being used, you can't recharge. This is great. Rosie, I did it. Not checking phone an hour before bedtime and found peace not checking phone an hour after I woke up too. Wow, I'm so impressed, guys, this is awesome. Guys, comment away, I'm reading out as many comments as I can, and now I'm gonna shoot into our content. Make sure you stay here. So today's session is all about energy management. I'm gonna explain what I mean by that, right? I want you to stay in this session. If you've just joined now, a massive welcome. I've just been sharing what other people have been saying, and I'm now going to share with you today's session, challenge number two, called energy management. Before I do that, I wanna start off by saying this one thing. There are two types of education. One is how to make a living. The other is how to make a life. There are two types of education. The first one, most of us spend 18 years of our life from three to 21, or at least from three to 18, or maybe three to 16, we spend a considerable amount of time and energy on the first, making a living. But we never ever get the education, or we often miss out on the education that is needed to make a life. In many of my videos, one of my favorite ones called Build a Life, Not a Resume, I talk about why this second investment is so important. Because when we choose to make a life, everything is affected. And this is what energy management is all about. How many of you hear from your friends, your family, the people around you, I want more of your time? How many of you hear from your bosses, the people you work with, your colleagues, that say you need to spend more time? How many of you feel inside guilt, pain, pressure, thinking I need to spend more time with someone or on something? How many of you feel that to be more productive, to actually achieve your goals, to actually be successful, you need more time? I sit with entrepreneurs, 
athletes, successful people, people trying to make it, students, people who've just started their businesses, people who are new to the game. I have sit with all types of people. And the biggest thing I always hear is, Jay, I wish I had more time. And that's why I thought this session was so important. Everyone is so fixated on time management, but I want us to switch our focus to energy management. Kara says, hey Jay, I'm here. I struggle with energy management for sure. Tejul says, what a valuable lesson this will be. Polly said, my boss said that I need more time to do things because I'm too fast and energetic. Never enough time, I think, says Rodney. I'm eager, Jay. Thanks for all of this, says LA. Rita, when we choose to make a life, energy is affected. Kaza says, energy management. I really wanted to learn how to manage my energy. Keep them coming, Jay. Awesome. I've wanted to apply every wisdom I've learned yesterday. I've applied water, exercise, and diet. I'm so excited with the next challenge. John, congratulations, bro. That's awesome. This is great. So, I'm going to talk to you. Daniela from Denmark. Thank you for trying out the challenge. It's great to see so many people. Zelia says, I really need you to change my energy, Jay. You've come at the right time in my life and it was by chance. Thank you for all the good you're doing. Well, thank you. So, here we go. The people around you are asking for your time. What they actually mean is that they want your energy. Imagine I spent an hour of my time on this live with you, right? We went for over an hour yesterday. Imagine how much impact and value that is. We had an hour's coaching session that most people are investing thousands of dollars into to have an hour of coaching. For an hour of coaching we had yesterday on the power of early rising. Today we're having an hour of coaching on energy management. But imagine I was here for this hour, but I was on my phone like this and I was kind of like, oh, oh, hey guys. Oh yeah, that's a really good point, guys. Oh, wait a minute, I just need to take a call. Hey mom, how's it? Imagine, imagine that's how I spent my time on this call with all of you. Imagine that I spent an hour with you, but for that whole hour I was distracted. Would you prefer that? Or would you prefer 20 minutes of my time with all of my energy, with all of my focus, with all of my attention? Chances are that you and your family members, everyone, will choose the second option. All of us would rather have 20 minutes of someone's real energy, their real heart, their real presence, their real love, their real, real affection than we would have an hour of their distraction. We'd rather have 10 minutes of someone's affection than an hour of their distraction. People in your life want 10 minutes of your affection instead of a weekend of your distraction. So many of our relationship problems in life would disappear if we brought our energy to people and not just our time to people. We're so used to giving people our time that we forget to give them our energy. We're so used to giving people our time that we forget that what they're really looking for is our energy, right? Does that resonate? Guys, that's a really, really strong point. It's a really, really powerful point. Yeah, I hope that resonates. Just really take that in. I'm defining energy management for you. It's when you're bringing the best of yourself to a situation. It's when you're being, bringing the highest optimal productivity to what you're doing even if you plan to spend less time on it. I remember that when I used to work in the corporate world, so yesterday I talked about a bit of my journey as a monk, which I'll share more about. But for those of you who don't know, I spent two to three years working in the corporate world. So I know what it feels like to go into work every day, to clock in, to clock out. I know what it feels like to have a boss and have someone manage you. I know what it feels like to have to report to someone. I know what it feels like to have more things thrown on your desk at the end of the day. I know exactly what it feels like to work in a stressful, intense, and really quite draining environment. I get it, right? I know what that feels like. I know what that genuinely does to your body, to your mind, to your energy. I get it, right? So I'm speaking from a point of perspective and understanding, right? And an understanding. So, 
the key thing here, the key point I wanted to make. Everyone would prefer the latter. Let me have a look at some of your questions. Joanna says, absolutely not. I'll prefer the latter. Full presence and attention is more crucial. Doa says, Reali really, it is an amazing topic and it's not about time, it's about energy. If you have a passion to do something, you can create time. Absolutely. Cutting, sorry, I hope it's not cutting out anymore. I have no idea. It may have been a phone interference. I've moved my phone away. Let me know. Keep me posted. Okay. Sorry if it kept stopping and starting. No idea why it's doing that. Just checking all my other devices. All of them are off. Uh, Am I back? Am I back? Let me know. Am I back? Am I back? Let me know. I'm just checking for you guys. All my other devices are off. It's okay, y'all. It's just pausing. So guys, it's probably just pausing. Don't worry. Just stay tuned. It's there. So, I'm going to continue. This is really important about energy management. So we're going to focus on how to manage your energy, right? We're going to focus on, okay, it's steady now. Okay, it's steady now. I have no idea what that was. Maybe it's just a slight interference. So stay tuned, don't worry guys, don't worry, right? Streaming issues, all these things happen. Just stay tuned for a second. So these are ways to manage your energy for optimum productivity. Right, ways to manage your energy for optimum productivity. How many of you would like to be at optimum productivity? Say yes out loud wherever you are. Press that like and love button. I'm seeing all that energy flying across the screen. I love it. So listen to this. How many of you feel you're working at optimum energy? What I've been seeing from the comments, the answer is not many of us, right? Not many of us are feeling that way at all. Right? Not many of us are feeling, not many of us are feeling that we are at optimal energy. Right? Not many of us feel that. So amazing. Now it seems okay. Great. I'm glad we're back on, guys. So, so listen to this carefully. Right? Listen to this carefully. Listen to this carefully. A new study shows that even though business leaders' energy levels are rising, their productivity isn't following suit. I'll explain what I mean by that. Stay tuned. So USC did some research. They found that 82% of business leaders aren't working at their ideal energy levels. Now let's see what happens. Let's see what happens when someone like you does not work to their highest energy level. Guess what happens? You're naturally, your career and your work suffers. Your boss is calling you out. Your managers are calling you out. You're seeing that lack of focus. What happens at home? Your partner feels your lack of energy. Your children feel your lack of energy. Your friends feel your lack of energy. And what happens? You end up feeling guilty. You end up feeling really unfocused. You end up feeling really hurt. You end up feeling like you want to achieve more and do more. When your energy drops, everything drops. I've been there physically. When my health collapsed, when I've had health challenges, my energy dropped so much that it makes me a completely different person. It makes me act differently with the people I love. It helps me behave. It makes me behave in completely other ways because I'm so low on energy. Anything that you don't feel is going to be super useful, you try and discount. So energy can really make a big difference, right? So 82% of business leaders don't feel that way. Now listen to this carefully. Listen to this carefully. Yet, yeah, charging too hard can actually cause your productivity to decline, right? Even if you're feeling energetic and enthusiastic, keep up that pace and you'll start to make mistakes, lose perspective and ultimately burn out. And we see that in a lot of people, that you have to have momentum, but you also have moments of slowing down, of relaxing. And when we say relaxing, we misunderstand that word. We see relaxing as turning on the TV. Actually, what relaxing should be is refueling, right? When you want to recharge your phone, you don't put your phone in front of the TV. You don't put your phone next to a tr music, right? You put your phone through a charge cable that charges that phone. You are the same. Yes, we're not machines, but what we have inside us is machinery. It's like a tool that has to be refueled and re-energized. So we all, all need this. 
Now, one of the number one ways to boost your energy, right? Energy management. Energy management, directly from me, is don't split your time, split according to energy. If you think that someone wants two hours of your time, but you'll only be able to give them 20 minutes of your energy, make that meeting 30 minutes. Make that event 30 minutes. Make that phone call 30 minutes. Manage your energy. What we do is manage our time. We go, oh, I've got two hours free, or I've got half an hour free. Let me just waste that on making a phone call. Let me waste that putting on a Netflix show. But what that's doing is it's actually sapping our energy rather than increasing our energy. So the first thing is don't split your time. Think energy first. Don't think time first. Think energy first. So, if you can, so often people reach out to me and say, Jay, I'd love to spend like an hour and a half with you. And I say, well, I'll spend 15 minutes with you. And they'll say, well, why? Like, and I'll be like, because I've got so many people to meet. I want to just be able to give you full energy and full focus and full attention. So I'm splitting my energy, not splitting my time. Does that make sense? Right? Amazing point, says Power. Right? That's my first point. My first point to you is energy first, right? My first point to you is energy first. Stephen, I've lost romantic partners I've really loved because I lost the energy I had with them, exactly. Willie says, I think it helps if you enjoy the work you're doing. Some people may not like their job and think that can affect energy levels. Yes, it can, but everyone has to make a living and I get that. So if, even if you don't like your work, Willie, you're absolutely right, but even if you don't like your work, these tips will still help you manage your energy. Donald says, keep telling yourself, I have unlimited amount of energy every day. Soon your mind and body will believe it and you will have energy. I love that. There's truth in that, but there are changes we can make as well. Now, so that's the first point I wanted to talk to you about, right? The first point in energy is making sure that you think energy first. Do not give people your time. Focus on giving them your energy. I guarantee you, even if you give someone 10 minutes of your energy, they'll value that way more than if you gave them an hour of your time. I promise you, right? Manage your energy. Energy first. That's the first point. The second point I wanted to make is about negative energy. We manage our time. We think, I'm going to spend an hour with this friend. I know that she likes to gossip or he likes to gossip. And I know like they're always criticizing people. But anyway, they're a good friend. I'll spend an hour with them. You know what an hour of negativity does? Right? An hour of negativity can drain you. But when you focus on energy management, even when you're in that situation, you try and switch off. There's a beautiful analogy given in the Vedic tradition of a turtle. And it's said that when a turtle is happy in a positive environment, the turtle extends its limbs outside its shell so it can soak up the light, it can soak up the energy. So we should be like that turtle, that in a position where we're in an abundant energy, we're surrounded by powerful people, we're surrounded by an incredible, like, incredible buzz that we're love that is positive for us, we should extend ourselves so far out that we can actually absorb all of it. But when the turtle is under attack, when the turtle is under danger, then the turtle retracts its limbs and takes them inside its shell to protect itself. Similarly, when we're in negative energy that we can't always control being around, whether it's at work, whether it's at home, whether it's at friends, we have to retract our limbs and go inward to protect ourselves. That is energy management too. The point about negative energy, how to manage negative energy. See, our world is filled with it. Our world is filled with it. But let me tell you a short method, a short analogy that I really like. Imagine if I gave you $86,400 today, right? Imagine if I gave you $86,400 and imagine someone stole $10. Actually, forget that. Let's say someone stole $40. Actually, scrap that. Someone stole $400, right? So you've got $86,400. This is not a math quiz, so you don't have to be good at math, so don't worry. Imagine I gave you $86,400, someone stole $400. How much do you have left? 86,000, right? Would you waste the rest of that $86,000 figuring out who stole that $400?
would you spend the rest of that $86,000 worrying about that $400? Would you spend the rest of that $86,000 on trying to figure out who stole it, where did they do it from, where did they do it, how did they do it, and then end up with none of that? Would you do that? No, you wouldn't. So why do you do that with your time? Why is it that when we waste one hour of our day, we sit there going, Oh, she wasted all my time. He wasted all my time. I could have done so much. Oh my God, it's so negative. Oh my God, it's so bad. It makes no sense. It makes no sense. Because you yourself still have 86,000. And the reason why that number sticks is that all of us have 86,400 seconds a day. If someone steals 400 seconds, if someone steals 6,400 seconds, if someone steals 60,400 seconds, you still have the rest of the time to make a difference, to drive your energy in the right direction. But if you waste the energy that you have fixated on those who give you negative energy, oh, you will be wasting so much time and focus and effort. The second point is my negative energy point. When it comes to negative energy, right, be really careful. But remember, it's energy shift, not time shift, right? Let's have a look. How many of you are enjoying this? How many of you find this useful? Tell me. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Loving all the likes and love flying through, which means you like and love it, which is awesome. Let me have a look at some of your comments now. Let's have a look. Uh, just scrolling through your comments. This is great. So by the way, guys, you can't see this, but I, I basically brought a brand, brand new device just to do this with you because then I can stay so focused, have amazing connection, see all your comments with ease as well. So let me have a look here. Let's have a look. Let me have a look at some of your comments. I switched off... Anu says, oh my God, yes, I've cut off so many people who I realize continually spread negative energy. Exactly an hour of negativity can drain you, so always surround yourself with positive people. Right, it's okay to outgrow people that are not growing. Now you may say, well, what do I do when it's my family? You can spend time with your family. You can spend time with them, there's nothing wrong with that. Just make sure that you're like that turtle, you're preserving your energy, and you're having that space where you can extend your limbs. The challenge is, that we spend all of our time with people who drain us and we don't focus on creating a space where people uplift us, where people enlighten us. It's up to us, it's a choice to take that responsibility to surround ourselves with positive people. What have you just done these five days? You've made a commitment to surround yourself with energetic, positive, uplifting people. And guess what? There's 140,000 of you. That commitment is huge. Right? Manifest positive energy. Need. Po Mary says, that's like when I'm driving on a beautiful day and feel positivity. I might put my arm out the window to feel it even more, to be a part of it. I'm a turtle woman. <laughs> I love that, Mary. That's awesome. Danika, this is the area I need. The negative energy with family and friends that is toxic. I love that turtle analogy. I'm so glad. Jeannie says, I will not waste my energy or time to find out who stole it. Wow, I absolutely love that. That's, I love that. That's brilliant. Thank you so much. That's an awesome thought. I have cut off too many people feel so much better, says Mars. So that's what you'll notice. One thing I've noticed since I started meditating, since I really took to this path, which was around 12 years ago when I started really investing in myself, one of the things that I found is that the difference between those who start their progressive internal journey and those that last are those who change their circle. It's as simple as that. It's those who changed their circle. The people that lasted are the people that changed their circle. Right? When you change your circle, any change is lasting. When you try and hold on to that old circle, it's painful. And you hear everyone say who changed their circle that at the start, they were sad to lose their friends. At the start, it was a difficult situation. But now they value it much more. And guess what? Their friends even come back now. That's the thing. You can't change your friends in the moment. When you're, med when you're meditating, you're doing something new, it's hard to bring your friends on the journey. When they see the change in your character, 
when they see the change in who you really are. And that's why this isn't about going to all your friends, oh, I'm better than you now, I don't need you anymore, I'm positive, you're negative. Like, that's not the point, right? That's not the point. If you do that, that's not a transformation of character. But if you say, you know what, this is what really matters to me, this is what I want to focus on, this is what I want to give my energy to, and you're open and honest with them, that's what really it's about, right? That's what it's truly about. Guys, I hope you're loving this session. I hope you're getting so much value from it. I'm like literally dropping some of the most powerful points I've said in a long time because I'm feeding off your energy, right? We're talking about energy management. And this is what happens when you have a community of three and a half thousand people, 140,000 people in the group who are waiting to grow, waiting to be energized. That channels, that flows through. Anna says, yes, I used to work with someone who had such negative energy that I feel drained after meeting with her. Interesting, tell me more. One second, tell me more. I had to spend less time with her to stop her from making me feel sapped of my own energy. This is great, guys. Absolutely true, she cut off the negative energy. Great, so that was point number two that I wanted to share with you. I have to share with you, I've got six points to share with you. We've done two. The third point I wanted to tell you about the third point is all about the, es the essential focus. I'm calling it essential focus. So the first was the energy management. The second was neg managing negative energy, N, negative energy. The third one is E. So I'm spelling out the word energy for those of you who don't know. E is about essential focus, right? Essential focus, I'll explain what I mean by that. Too many of us try to achieve too many tasks that require too many different brain powers in the same amount of time. I'll give you an example, and this is really important. Your brain, as much as you like to think you can, cannot be in two places at once. Just as you can't be on the beach and at the office at the same time, even though you'd love to, even though you may change your screensaver, right? Even though you may figure out every possible way to try and do that, and man will try and create, and women will try and create a technology that allows us to do that, you cannot be in the same place in two, at one time. Your brain can't do two things at the same time effectively. Your mind can't process the two things effectively. Your body can't exercise and eat at the same time. Your body can't be creative, your mind can't be creative, and your body can't be exercising at the same time. We can't do two things at once at productive levels. How many times have you ever had multiple apps open on your phone, right? And what's the thing we're always told to do? Close your apps, right? You can't have too many apps running at the same time on this device. You can't have too many apps running up here at the same time. It will drain you, right? It will drain you. It will completely, completely drain you. It will destroy and take away your energy. If you have too many apps running on here, this slows down, the memory slows down, the speed slows down. What happens with us? Exactly the same thing. Exactly the same thing, right? When you have too many apps running, when you have too many tabs open, everything slows down. In our life, we have too many tabs open. In our life, we have too many apps open. In our life, we're doing too much processing of opposing things at the same time. That's why the third point is essential focus. Essential focus. One of the best ways to do this is when you're working on projects that require a lot of focus and energy, that they require probably the most of you that you've ever seen for a long time, it's so important, right? It's so important to have essential focus. Essential focus means that you're able to give attention, right? That you're able to give attention to what it is. I'll give you an example. If I want to make a video, right? If I want to make a video, you've all seen my videos, you've all engaged with them. I'm sure many of you have liked and shared them. I just shared a new one in the group today as well. When I want to make a video, I have to exclusive, actually I'm changing that, not essential focus, I want to change it to exclusive focus. I have to give my exclusive focus when I'm trying to build something big. When I'm trying to do something small or something that I have to do daily, it can become a routine, like you can brush your teeth 
and listen to music at the same time. Right? You can do that if you like to do that. You can cook and listen to music at the same time. Because those are daily activities. But if you're now trying to write a book, you're now trying to start a business, you're now trying to write a blog, you're now trying to make a video, you're now trying to focus your efforts on raising brilliant children, whatever it is, that requires exclusive focus. What I mean by that is blocking out time and energy to give your all to something. Right? I'll give you an example. If I'm working on something creative in my right side of the brain, so we have two sides of the brain generally, the right side is creative and dynamic, the left side is logical and stable and structured. The right side of our brain is imaginative, curiosity, exploring. The left side of our brain is being level-headed, grounded, statistics, logistics, right? So, if I'm trying to do a creative task and in one hour I want to now run to a logical task, it's like running from one side of my brain to the other side of the brain. Now, let me tell you this. Whether you're in LA or in New York or in London or in Malaysia or India or the Philippines or South Africa or Australia, wherever you are and you're watching this on the replay, sorry if I didn't say your country, but wherever you are in the world, imagine you try to run from the city to the outskirts. Imagine you try to run from the city center to the countryside. Totally opposite. How long would it take? How much energy would you drain? But imagine if one day you spent in the city and then you spend the weekend in the country and then you spend a couple of days or a couple of hours in here. What we try and do with extreme exclusive focus is that we try and switch between two polar opposites in the same hour, in the same 10 minutes, in the same minute. We try to go from something and then shift to something else. Patricia, if you're struggling with that, please go watch the first session because a lot of what I shared in the first session will totally help with that, right? I love this from... Amelie, I have old Nokia with buttons. Apps don't work on me. Don't worry, I get the meaning, but I couldn't resist. I love that. I'm, I love humor, so feel free to throw that in. Sazo said, this is a really good point. I think women like this. We always think and do many tasks at the same time. Everyone does. It's not just women. Chris says, don't waste your energy with little things. Make big dreams come true. Surround yourself with positive people. So this exclusive point is really, really important. You can't run from one energy to another energy. I'll give you an example. If I'm trying to be creative, I can't suddenly switch into business mode. If I'm trying to be loving, I can't certainly make big decisions and be clinical, right? Blocking out time allows you to focus. And that's fine, Fahima. So Fahima's made a really important point. If you can't focus for more than 20 minutes, Fahima, 20 minutes, take a break, go back for 20 minutes. There's nothing wrong with that. You've identified that. You have awareness on that. That's a great place to be, right? That's a great place to be. So don't worry about that. Don't recognize, don't worry about that. Right? So that's extreme focus, uh, exclusive focus, Kara, exclusive focus. What I'm trying to say there is don't try and achieve too much in one day. You can't master your life in one day. So master the day by mastering one focus. With your big things. Now I get it. You got to cook. You got to you got to drop kids to school. You got you know that I get all that stuff. That's fine. But what I'm saying is, when you're trying to build something big, you're trying to build a meditation habit. Give it focus. Jennifer Long. It's a shame that multitasking is known as such a desirable skill. I think when mistakes and errors are expected, multitask away. But if you want to get it right, being able to focus on one thing at a time should be the new desirable norm. Jennifer Long, Jarrett, you have hit the nail on the head, right? Spot on. You're, you're exactly right. Thank you for sharing that. That's exactly what I'm saying. And you said it so eloquently. Thank you so much. Sonali says, I want to try to focus on my YouTube channel, but now I can't focus and I don't know why. Well, the reason is because you need to block out time. YouTube requires creativity. It requires focus. You need to block a weekend. You can't be saying, I'm going to go out with my friends all day and then in the evening I'll come up with a video idea. Even I can't do that. Right? I make so many videos. We have around 80 videos on YouTube. Have probably more than that on Facebook. And when I'm making all these videos, I need to give them attention. Right? 
right? Catherine says, being positive is hard, but from your talk from yesterday really allowed me and I talked about it with my boyfriend and it helped him as well. Well, thank you, Catherine. I'm glad you're sharing it. Paulina Andre said, amazing. You're so right. It is a waste of energy. I'm definitely watching the replay more on that once. I really, yeah, this live right now is so on fire that I highly recommend if you're watching the replay, pause it, make notes. You, I hope you're making notes right now. Share them in the group, but really, really important that if you're listening right now, that you, you've watched the replay of this again, right? You've watched the replay. See, as we move through the five days, as we move from two to three to four to five, I want you to have absorbed as much as you can. So as we move forward and I share more challenges and more stories, right? This is great. Alessa says, can we use this for distress tolerance? When we're stressing, can we exclusive focus to help us de-stress? 100%. Exclusive focus. If you want to deal with something, you have to give it extreme focus, exclusive focus. If you don't want to deal with it, you don't, right? That's how it works. It's like putting something under a magnifying glass. The sun is giving light everywhere, but if the sun needs to have impact, you put a magnifying glass, it will burn the paper or even a person. Don't, don't try it out. But the point being that you have to do that. I love that, Mila. Tell me where you read that. It's awesome. Right? When you want to master something big, and this leads on to our next point, which is R. So we had energy management, right? Knowing what boosts your energy, knowing what brings it down, negative energy, how to manage that. We had exclusive focus, and now the R, and the R stands for recognize the race you need to run. This is more of an internal point. Recognize the race you need to run. You've probably heard before, it's a marathon, not a sprint. In other words, you may have to reduce your space so you don't burn out. The problem today is that we've got used to instant everything. Instant Uber, right? Instant food, Uber Eats, instant delivery. Amazon Prime, everything is instant. And we think we can order and have our goals delivered. We think we can order and have success delivered. We think that we can order and have success at our doorstep without taking a step outdoors. That's just not true. Success can never be delivered to your doorstep. Success is about walking as far away from your door and opening up as many doors as you possibly can, right? As you possibly can. It's insane how much we are locked by the fact that we do not recognize that we're living in the world of a marathon, not a sprint, right? A marathon, not a sprint. So say a business development manager leading a team, let's say you are dealing with a huge project, right? Dealing with a huge project, don't expect it to work like a sprint. Recognize what in your life is big and will take time. So I have this mantra that I say, I'm impatient for the small things, I'm patient for the big things. I was offered a book deal two years ago and I've been patiently working on my book, writing it, focusing on it, growing the idea, growing it, letting it just really expand rather than just doing it in one go. Patience, right, for the big things. But if I want to launch a video, I'm going to focus on it today, get it done and get the video out. Right, patient for the big things, impatient about the small things. If you need to write one article, get that done. If you want to write a book, it will take time. Recognize, because this will let you manage energy. Why? Because energy gets drained when we feel we have to achieve the biggest thing now. If I had to write a book today, I would sap all my energy into one day and then I would have no energy for the rest of the day. I'd be running around, right? I'm seeing a lot of like, um, I forget what these emojis are called, but they're like the shock emoji. Like, wow, you just blew my mind. I like it. It's good. I like that emoji. Use that one more. Uh, but, but it's mind blowing, right? It's really, really important that it's really, really important. You have to recognize the race you want to run because not, and that's going to sap your energy. Too many of us want it right now. And because we want it right now and you can't have it, that saps your energy. It drains your energy. 
Miguel says, Jay, you're right about success not being given to us. I failed my project, thus failing my subject because I failed to give enough focus. I heard this one, success is not given, it's earned. Exactly, absolutely. But everything in our life is pre-ordered, delivered. But success is not pre-ordered or delivered. You can pre-order it, but then you've got to do the work, right? Really excited about the book, Abby, awesome. One thing at a time, yep. One thing at a time. Know the race you want to run, right? Amazing. This is so awesome, guys. I'm absolutely loving this session. I hope you are. I'm, I'm in my element when I'm with all of you. I'm, I'm super excited. I'm sharing some beautiful points that are all inspired by you. Right? This is beautiful. Beautiful. So energy management, know what lifts your energy, know what doesn't. Negative energy, focus on managing that, like I said. Exclusive focus, remember the race you want to run. There are two more points I wanted to raise. Got a lot more things to say to you, but two key points that I wanted to say about energy management. And the one I wanted to share with you guys right now is all about going all in. And I don't mean exclusive focus by this. But I'll explain what I mean by this. Going all in. Going all in. And I love this analogy. How many of you like pretzels? Anyone like pretzels? Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Pretzels. If you don't know what I'm talking about, Google it. Some of you have never seen a pretzel before. If you're outside the outside certain countries, maybe pretzels aren't popular at all. Maybe in Asia. I don't think I've ever seen a pretzel in Asia. But what you don't want to be, which is really important for energy management is don't try to be a professional pretzel, right? Don't try to be a professional pretzel. Trying to be someone you're not is hard work, professionally or personally. Don't waste your energy trying to be what you're not, right? Albert Einstein said it best. If you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will spend its whole life believing that it's stupid. You can't live like that. Right, you can't live like that. And so if you are a fish, but you're trying to live like a monkey, if you're a lion, but you're trying to live like a dog, it's just not going to work. Right? It's just not going to work. Being a professional pretzel, what do I mean by that? Twisting, molding into trying to be something that you're not, that is draining. That is draining. Right? Absolutely draining. R was remember the race you want to run, Priscilla. G is going all in on you. Don't be a professional pretzel. Trying to mold yourself, trying to twist yourself into being what other people want you to be. Right? Right? Now you may have to bend. You may have to adapt. You may have to try new things. But what I'm saying is that you can't just force yourself to be someone else. Does that make sense? You have to push. You have to get out of your comfort zone. You have to bend. But I don't want you to twist so much that you lose yourself. Right? Does that make sense? That is so draining when you're trying to be everything to everyone. That's what I'm saying. Go all in on you. Because when you're trying to be everything to everyone, you will run out of energy. It will drain your energy, right? It's one of the key points of energy management is you can adjust, you can push, but don't go so far as to not be yourself, right? When I say not be yourself, I don't mean being your lazy self, being your worst self. I mean getting self-awareness and growing that so deep that you then know who you are. Like, I don't mean just be your lazy self, be your unintelligent self. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not giving you an excuse. I'm sharing with you the point around how when you have deep self-awareness, you're not going to force yourself to be something else just to please other people, right? Dan, I love that. J Jay, I will never look at pretzels the same again. Love soft pretzels, says Carlos. Uh, Jukti says, it's horrible when you pretend to behave against your nature. Exactly. What can I do to recharge my energy? We're getting on that. We're getting on that. 
I'm loving and appreciating your time and energy, says Rita. Rita, thank you so much. So, that was G, going all in on you, right? Going all in on you. Not getting distracted, right? Not getting distracted by what other people want you to be. Really, really important. Yeah, really, really important. And finally, and finally, the important point here is you, your pace. The final why is your pace. Before I share that, I'm reading out some comments. Carrie says, oh my God, yeah, I love this. I had to stop teaching because I let it turn me into a professional pretzel. Sandy says, that's what happened to me. What a learning experience. I had nothing else to give by pleasing so many. Do not try to be everything to everyone. Yes. <laughs> I love that. Sunit so uh, Risha says, Jalebi in lieu of pretzel in India. I love it. That's awesome. I, I love that. Don't become, a, don't become a professional Jalebi for everyone in India. I love that. Uh, Elizabeth, I was a pretzel for many years and lost myself completely, finding myself again now. Though Elizabeth, you're in the right place. You're definitely in the right place. Uh, Leia, people so often tell me you seem so happy. You always lift my spirit. So the final one is your pace. Everyone has different levels of energy. Everyone expresses energy in different ways. Everyone lives their energy in different ways. Payal says, you really have the positive energy. I get energy listening to you. Thank you, Payal. Sorry, Tarina. We'll, we'll make sure that. Right. Uh, one of the most important things here is around your energy. Right? Your energy. Your pace. Don't try and be the energy that someone else has. Recognize what energy means to you. So energy for me is focus. Energy for me is attention. If someone's talking to me, when they're in front of me, I'm not like, oh my God, like this. I'm not like that. But I'm on stage, that's my energy. But when I'm with you one-on-one, -on -one, I'm just there. Focused, giving you my attention, giving you my intention, giving you my awareness. And deeply listening and processing and meditating for the person and praying for the person, thinking really deeply, compassionately about the person. That can also be energy. So the final point is your pace. Energy doesn't mean, whoa, right? Like that, that doesn't have to be energy. Energy doesn't have to be like you're bubbly all the time. What energy means is a definition that you give it. It's energy for you giving your focus. It's energy giving your attention. What is energy? Right? Energy is unique to each and every single one of us. It's not the same for everyone. People will give their energy in completely different ways. Right? Right? People will stop doing it in different met ways. Completely, completely different ways. So. I want to talk to you a bit about now, so those are energy management. Know what brings you up, know what brings you down. Negative energy, know how to manage it. Exclusive focus, when you want to grow something, you have to use all your energy. Remember, it's a run, right? Recognize the race you want to run. Go all in on your strengths. Don't become what other people want you to. And your pace, your pace, right? Everyone has their own pace. Everyone has their own pace. Morgan Freeman didn't make it till 52, right? Imagine he said, I want to be an actor by 49, didn't make it. We put time limits on what we love and what we don't love, we don't put any time limits on. We do them for all of time. We put time limits on what we love and we do what we don't love for all of time. Don't do that. Don't do that. Write that down as well. It's just so poignant. We put time limits on what we shouldn't put time limits on what we love because we end up doing what we don't love for all of time. Giovanna says, You're awesome, Jay. Everything you're sharing today is like you know me. 
Yeah, interesting point. I've, I've spent so much time studying human behavior and, and people and us, and I'm fascinated by what makes people better. Remember, this is not just some stuff I've come up with. I've spent about 12 years, maybe 14 now, on trying to deeply understand what drives humans and what moves humans and what helps us grow every day. Lenore says, you're an inspiration, continue to motivate millions every day. Thank you so much. Jack X says, Jay, when you're live, I'm so glad you're getting so much energy from these guys. I'm so happy. Like, it means so much to me that you're getting so much energy from this. And again, I want you to focus on taking away one big challenge for yourself out of the six that I've shared with you. I shared with you six points, and I want you to focus in on one of them as always. Pamela says, this hour goes too quick. Loving this five-day challenge. Thank you. I'm glad you are. Let me know. Leanne, you can see that you feel it so powerfully. Thank you so much, Leanne. That means so much to me. Awesome. So, one of the ways to grow energy every day is to feel like you're learning every day. Learning and progress will make you feel more energized than trying to aim for perfection. Perfection is so intangible. Perfection is so, like, ephemeral because we don't really know what it actually looks like that it's so much more powerful to focus on progress and if you're learning every day you'll feel more confidence you'll feel more self-esteem you'll feel more energy even if you learn one thing a day that's why this five-day challenge is perfect because for five days because you're growing you're learning you're trying and you'll feel progress you grow and that's why i want you even after this five-day challenge is over to feel that I want more. I need to commit to more. I need to always be challenged on a weekly basis. I need to be growing on a weekly basis. Right? Anu has stayed up till 2 a.m. for this. If you're watching this on the replay, I'm really grateful to each and every one of you. Thank you so much. So I want to share with you a few powerful points just about how you refuel, how you maintain energy. The first way, and this is what I call the refuel or the recharge of energy. We all need refuels and recharges. Schedule it. No matter whether, you, whether or not you think you need a break, schedule a refuel and recharge. Now, when I say refuel and recharge, I really do not mean watching TV. I really do not mean browsing on Instagram. I really, really mean a refuel or recharge. I'll give you an example. It may be going out for a healthy meal with friends. It may be going out to play some sport. It may be going to the gym. It may be going for a swim. It may be getting a massage. It may be going to a meditation class in your local area, right? Whatever it may be. I'll give you an example. We, we've been doing weekly meditations in one, of my, in one of my groups. And the incredible thing about it is that people who've never meditated have done it all before, right? So schedule it. Schedule time to refill and recharge. Your phone needs to be charged. You need to be recharged. Cheryl says, Jay, I'm so grateful for your videos was at my wit's end before I started watching your videos, really ready to just give up on life and everything. Again, thank you so much. Cheryl Dunstan, setting a little prayer and meditation for you right now. So grateful, thank you so much. Andrea, yes, that's my life's motto, progress, not perfection. This is what I teach my students. Andrea, I love that. This is great. Scott says, this is helping me focus my energy to follow what I love and end doing what makes me unhappy. I can't express my appreciation enough. Well, I'm feeling it, bro. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So, <clears throat> second point for refill and recharge is double the break you think you need. So you think you need a, a one-day refuel or a five-minute refuel, get a 20-minute refuel, like up that, right? <clears throat> Remember, this is refill and recharge, not just having a break, not just wasting time. Third is enlist powerful, positive people. Try and gravitate towards them. Focus on being with them. Go to the places that they are. Don't try to drag them down. Go to the places that they are. We want positive, fun people to do what we want, when actually we should want to be where they are, right? If you go gravitate towards them, they'll uplift you. If you drag them towards you, they'll be too scared to fall that they won't hold, right? And make a list of the benefits of doing this, guys. Like, really know if you don't manage your energy, you get burnt out, you lose relationship, you push people away, it will affect the success of your career. Not managing your energy is super tough, guys, right?
Oh, I love this. Marcy, I love this. So Marcy's just shared this. She says, pretzels were invented by an Italian monk and given to children as little rewards, pretiola, and resembled arms folded across the chest in prayer. Let's go back to more of the original instead of the knots. Oh my God, I love that. Thanks for sharing that, Marcy. That's so epic. That's, that's brilliant. Thank you for looking into that for me. Uh, I didn't know that. I love that. Love learning. See, as soon as I learned something new that you shared, Marcy, look what happened. I had this beaming smile on my face. I felt excited. I can't wait to share that with people today. That's how you should feel. You're getting an hour every day, thousands of dollars worth of coaching. We're doing it together. We're sharing energy, trading energy, growing together. Please don't underestimate this. Please don't undervalue this. Please don't see it as just words. This actually can change your life. This can actually make a huge difference. And I know you can. So I wanted to share some things to you. I really want all of you to share your notes, your reflections, your realizations in the group. Please do not post random stuff, random quotes, things from outside. I love all that, but we really want to grow a positive community, a conscious community of change makers around success habits. So please, please, please post what you're learning here. Post what you're growing here. Be mindful. Share your notes. Share your lessons. Share your reflections. Right? And keep it absolutely relevant to the group. Right? Keep it absolutely relevant to the group because people here have committed for that. I want to be able to monitor their experience as much as, as we can because when we put random quotes, random videos, it distracts and disturbs. It becomes a distraction. Right? We want to give people our energy that is focused. We don't want any also, just to be mindful, this is not a space for current affairs, religion, politics. It's a space for success, habits, and growth. Sheila, I'm thankful to you. Ruth, I'm thankful to you. Rita, Anisha, Natalie, I'm thankful to you. Wow, Thomas has just shared this with me. Guys, let's all send a prayer. This is why I love having all of us here right now. I want 3,000 of us online to send a prayer to Thomas. Thomas says, I was just diagnosed with advanced cancer and I want to live life in the best way possible for whatever time I have left. I'm prepared to fight the disease and make the most of my life and hopefully make a difference for others. Thank you, Jay. Well, Thomas, I'm going to offer a meditation and prayer for you right now. And I'm requesting that anyone watching on the replay and any of you watching live also do that. If any else, any of you or others of you are struggling, etc., we're praying for you too. And it's so beautiful to have you in the community. Thank you for sharing that, Thomas. I really, really appreciate it. This is awesome. And the last point I'm going to make about that your pace is start to trust your body. If your body's telling you you need sleep, get some sleep. But then once you've got that sleep, go out and gain everything else I've been saying. Gain the people that energize you. Gain the meditations that energize you. Gain the processes that energize you. This is how you retain energy and expand it. This is how you retain energy and expand it. Guys, it's been incredible. We're only on day two and so much is happening. I am in awe of being with all of you. I'm loving the flow you're giving me. I'm genuinely in flow. If you don't know what flow is, flow is the highest form of energy management. It's when skill meets challenge. When I've got 145,000 people on a group and I want to share and help you grow, that's a big challenge. And then when I'm being able to rise my skill to that and they meet, I'm in flow and you're helping me channel that. So I'm so grateful to every single one of you. If any of you can go pick out my best, like, lines in this session like I don't plan my quotes I don't say stuff I don't have the like quotes noted out they, they come out naturally I really want you to if anyone can go out and pick out the best lines in this that would really mean a lot to me because I, I say stuff and then I forget what I said because it came out through the love and compassion and, and affection for all of you but sending you all my love sending you all my gratitude and I can't wait to see you all again tomorrow for session three do not miss it What's this one again? This one was, was big. What's this one again? Make sure you share it with everyone in the group. Share your notes, share your reflections, share your realizations. Be mindful and really, really make sure that you're getting the most out of these. Recommend that everyone goes and watches these as well. See you tomorrow, guys.